Algebra 2, 3.9D, sine function, signum function, SGN. I'll explain what that SGN is. If you haven't seen the previous videos for Chapter 3, you might get confused. We're on the fourth video for this lesson. If you want to see 3.9A, B, or C, just click on this video's description and you can go right to them. Signum is the Latin word for sine. And a signum function, or sine function, it's the same thing, can be written as SGN with the X in parentheses, and we would say it's sine function of X. And it's defined as only three values. So you get a choice of one of three. The sine function of X is going to equal a negative one when the X is less than a zero. And the sine function of X is going to equal a zero when X equals a zero. And it's going to equal a one if X is larger than zero. And this is for all values of X. So if you have uh, a sine function where x is a negative 24, well, that's less than 0. It's going to be a negative 1. If the sine function of x is 968, well, that's a lot bigger than 0. That's going to be a 1. So your choices are either negative 1, 0, or 1. That's it. Those are your choices. Well, what happens when we graph these is we end up with two rays. We end up with one heading off to the left at a height of negative one on the y-axis and heading off to the right at a height of positive one on the y-axis or it's at zero. See I got the black dot? So you can see I've got the open circle that means it's not included for when it's a negative one and for when it's a positive one but it's a black filled in dot saying zero is included, okay? So those are the values. And actually, sine functions are called odd mathematical functions. And we'll talk about that later on in this series. So signum functions, sine functions, are used in computer programming languages like Java and C++. And you're going to see it in calculus, too. If we multiply the absolute value of a real number by its signum function, the product will be that real number. So we've got x equals the sine function of x times the absolute value of x, okay? So this says if we multiply the absolute value of a real number by that signum function, it's going to be that number. Let's try negative 4. Negative 4 equals the sine function of x is negative 4, the sine function of negative 4, times the absolute value of negative 4. Well, the absolute value of negative 4 is just 4, isn't it? And because this negative 4 is less than 0, the sine of negative 4 is going to be a negative 1. So we're going to say this negative 4 is equal to negative 1, because this whole thing equals negative 1, times 4. Yeah, it does. See how that worked out? Let's try with a positive number. So here we've got x is the sine function of x times the absolute value of x, if we use a positive 5, well, this right here, this sine function of 5, is greater than 0, so we're going to have a positive 1 for this. When we multiply this positive 1 times the absolute value of 5, which is 5, we get 5. See how that happened? All right, let's keep going. x equals the sine function of x times this absolute value of x. All right, just like what we were doing before. What if x was a negative 3.47? Well, then the sine of this negative 3.47 times its absolute value, negative 3.47 is less than 0, so the sine of this is going to be a negative 1. Its only choices are negative 1, 0, or positive 1. And see how it took that negative sign? and it gave it to the 1, well, negative 3.47 is going to be equal to that negative 1 times the absolute value of negative 3.47, which is 3.47. And yeah, they're equal to each other. So when we do a negative, what's happening is this sine function of x is pulling that negative sign off of that number of x. When we did the positive 1, the sine function pulled the positive from that 
5, see? And gave us a positive 1. All right? So it pulls the sine of whatever x is and attaches it to a 1, whether it's negative or positive. Now look at, this is if x is not equal to 0, okay? So the sine function of x is going to equal x divided by the absolute value of x, which is also equal to the absolute value of x divided by x. So let's punch in some real numbers and see how this works. So what if x was a negative 2? That means we have the sine function of a negative 2, and that's going to equal a negative 2 divided by the absolute value of negative 2. Well, that's negative 2 divided by 2, isn't it? Same numerator and denominator, so that's a 1, but because of that numerator kept its negative sign, see, we're going to end up with a negative 1. And even if the absolute value was on the top, we have the same numerator and denominator. The absolute value of this is going to be a positive 2. And same numerator and denominator, it's going to be a negative 1. See that ha how that happened? Now look what happens when it does equal a 0. If x is equal to 0, then that means we've got the sine function of 0 times the absolute value of 0. Oh, that's a 0, isn't it? See? So our choices are negative 1, 0, or positive 1. That's it. And for any real number x, the absolute value of x is going to equal the sine function of x times x. So if we plug in our negative 2 again, the absolute value of negative 2 is a 2, isn't it? And the sine function of negative 2, well, negative 2 here is less than 0, isn't it? So we're going to get a negative 1. For this part, this will be equal to a negative 1. We're going to multiply it by that negative 2. And negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2, isn't it? Just like that's a positive 2. So I know I mentioned that this is an odd mathematical function. We're going to discuss even in odd math functions in Chapter 9. It's just basically if it's an even math function, whether you put a negative or positive number into here, you're going to get the same answer for even math functions. You'll get the same answer. They'll both be a positive 4 or they'll both be a negative 8 or whatever. With odd math functions, you're going to get opposites for the answer. So if you multiply by a negative 2 and a positive 2, you're going to end up with answers that are a negative or positive. See, the even one, you end up with the same answer. The odd one, you end up with opposite answers. We'll talk about that more in Chapter 9. So just remember, if x is a negative, the sine function of x is a negative 1. If x is positive, the sine function of x is a positive 1. If x is a 0, the sine function of x is going to be 0. And the sine function just uses the sine of x. So if x is a negative, then you're going to have a negative 1. If x is a positive, you're going to have a positive 1, OK? Our next video is 3.10, and we're going to talk about a word problem strategy called making an organized list. Help you solve word problems. I'm going to add this video to the Algebra 2 playlist. They're all going to be in this description of this video, so you can just click on them. There's going to be links to the Algebra 1 playlist of Chapter 7 and Chapter 12. If you're really confused, you can go back to there and it'll help you. All right. So I hope you're having a really nice day. It's a beautiful day today. And keep your chin up. Stay positive. Positive attitude can go a long way. Okay. It makes your brain open up for, for ideas. Okay. I think you can do this. I'll see you next video. Bye.